you like Ventura TV Appliance on Facebook, it's nice. But when you love the Whirlpool appliances we deliver, it's even better. Our website is cool and it's a good place to start, but you really should touch the merchandise before you buy. Touch the new Whirlpool Ice Collection. It offers a modern style made to create an inspiring kitchen experience. Save big on this Whirlpool Black Ice or White Ice Kitchen. Come in to Ventura TV Appliance and touch the merchandise today. Hi, I'm John Malos and welcome to this live edition of Connect With Me here on the showroom floor at Ventura TV on this uh, Friday morning. We're going to be talking politics. We'll have a Fresno County Supervisor in the house to talk about all sorts of issues including medical marijuana and marijuana grows across the Central Valley including uh, Fresno County. 436 Me TV Option 11, do turn down the sound when you call in. It is a Your Community Day here on Connect With Me on MeTV Fresno. Glad to have you along. The weekend is upon us. Of course, 436, MeTV Option 11 is the number. And remember, turn down the sound. We've got a lot of ground to cover today here on the half hour. A lot to talk about politics uh, again on our minds here on Connect With Me. First, I want to talk about the, uh, the YouTube uh, site that you can go to to watch any past shows that we've had. 450 plus now and running, still counting, uh, closing in on 500. You go to youtube.com forward slash me TV Fresno and then click on recent episodes or you can even go to uh, some past episodes that we've had here on Connect With Me dating back to 2012, I believe. Anyway, uh, we're going to be talking to a Fresno County Supervisor here in just a moment. As many of you know, you know, marijuana, using medical marijuana is still legal right here in the state of California. Many of you also know in the state of Washington and California, they legalize marijuana, but here in California, they're talking about putting such a measure on the ballot. It may or may not get on, I don't know, but right now for medical use, it is still legal. Let's go to the videotape. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Even though it is legal, that did not stop the Fresno County Board of Supervisors from putting a ban on growing medical marijuana or marijuana outdoors. Some who use medical marijuana here in Fresno County a bit outraged about it because they say it's perfectly legal to cultivate marijuana, up to six mature plants and 12 immature ones, and it's legal to have about eight ounces or so in your possession. But the vote was unanimous by the Fresno County Board of Soups. Uh, those living in places like Squaw Valley and other outlining areas say enough is enough of these illegal grows. They're invading our property, our area, our living space. And so uh, with that being said, they are being overrun by marijuana grows in the foothills, so to speak. That's why the County Board of Supervisors took that vote. Anyway, live in our studio right now is Henry Perea. He is a longtime supervisor. He knows politics in the Central Valley. He is also a former Fresno City Councilman. He'll answer your questions at 436 Me TV Option 11 about medical marijuana, about other issues that could be on your mind. We're back with our program with Henry Perea in just a moment. Don't you ever hit me again! We got a hit on our Me hands. TV Fresno now on Comcast Channel 187. There aren't too many people that uh, have been around politics and know politics inside out uh, in this city and in this county like Henry Pere. It's good to see you. How good are you, my friend? Doing good. How you been, yeah. John? Welcome back to the show. It's been hey. a long time. It's been a while. I thought I thought maybe I'd said something wrong the last time I was no, here. No, 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 no. Nothing you said. <laughs> okay. Nothing you said. But I got to ask you. Last time you were, you were here, you were not a grandfather yet, right? Right. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. First uh, grandbaby, right? Right. Your so, son, well, Henry T? My, my son, Henry T, has, uh, you know, two two babies now. Uh, oh, wow. Ava, 
and Joaquin and my other son Thomas just had a baby uh, Sophia so yeah <laughs> so is it better being a parent or a grandparent you know they're both great in, in different ways but I, I really like being a grandparent it's just a whole different feeling I don't even can't even describe it yeah but, but it's great in the monologue we talked about uh, medical marijuana yeah. and marijuana in general the grows I, I I know that the supervisors had that unanimous vote a few months ago in fact let's roll the tape we'll take a look at some marijuana plants while we're talking about this why the ban in your in your judgment yeah well I mean I, I think we all know that that uh, having medical marijuana and using it in California is legal I think the issue for us uh, came a few years back when when we passed all the proper resolutions to, one to allow folks to have medical marijuana cards and two to allow them to grow marijuana for their medical use uh, from there it just it got out of control I mean we, we certainly so they're abuse <laughs> so some people are abusing the system oh no question no question yeah. about it from from major marijuana grows within our foothill areas and even down on the ground floor I mean you go into cities like or communities like Parlier, Reedley, Selma, Sanger I mean it's just acres and acres of marijuana growths uh, that were springing up and when you talk about the type of growths that had then guard towers at each corner with you know guns at the t I mean something was wrong so yeah. so what the county did is is uh, you know weighing public safety against people's legitimate use to or right to use medical marijuana we basically took a time out we're saying stop uh, so obviously we're not saying you can't use medical marijuana in Fresno County or we're just saying now you can't grow it here so you can't even grow a small amount that is legal to grow, like in your home, if you need it. I'm not talking about the right. big grows, right. you know, out in Squaw Valley or uh, some other uh, rural areas. But it, would it be illegal for someone to grow it in their house within the state legal guidelines? Correct. It would be illegal to grow any marijuana within Fresno County. Now, now let's talk reality. I mean, if, if someone springs up five acres of marijuana tomorrow, our sheriff is going to be all over it. Right. If someone is growing a plant in their closet use. in their home who's going to know okay right. so, so so we're not saying and then, go, and we're not going to make a big deal about exactly it, right? but uh, we're not saying go do it we're just saying right now because of the way the laws are and the way our law now is is you can't grow it period good morning you're on connect with me your question hi uh this is a multi-complex uh situation that we've got here yeah um the more the the prohibition against marijuana started in 1937 prior to that you could buy it along with whatever in your pharmacies go to columbia the the little town up near sonora you'll see boxes of it um the more that they restrict marijuana the more that people cartels drug cartels not people medical marijuana users or people that use it as a glass of wine because they don't like the effects of alcohol, whatever reason they use it. Um, the fact that it is illegal federally makes... Uh, when I lived in the South, um, alcohol, they had dry counties. So yeah. they bootlegged liquor the same as way that they bootleg marijuana here. If marijuana was legal and regulated and grown as an agricultural crop, we could uh, derive um, sources of paper where we could save trees. The Declaration okay. of Independence is written on hemp. We can make rope out of it. We can make clothing out of it. We can make <laughs> stuff right. out of it. We, we, get, <laughs> we, get, we get your drift, but I, we're kind of short on time. It's only a half-hour show, so we kind of get the, yeah, the yes, gist of I your... Yes, under, I understand that. Okay. But how much money do we spend locking up people and okay. raiding the groves when we could be reaping taxes and helping the economy, right. helping the Let, planet? All right. Let the supervisor answer your question. Thank you for the call. Appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And thank you for the, um, I mean, there's a lot of information there and there's a lot I don't disagree with you on, but here's the deal. I mean, I see it two different issues. One is medical marijuana and how do we get it to those who legitimately need it? And what the county is doing right now is taking a pause saying what ended up happening was just what you mentioned. A lot of the drug cartels in this uh, yeah. country and from other countries were taking advantage of the grows and, uh, and using medical marijuana 
as an excuse to make a lot of illegal profit. Well, you know what they did in Washington and Colorado? Right. I don't know if you're in favor of that in California Well, you know, we're, we're not, watching that right now because, you know, the, really the other issue, one is medical marijuana. The other one is, does it make sense to just allow marijuana to be yeah. used? Everything. Yeah. And that's not the law in our state right now. Are you still kind of on the fence on that? You're kind of debating in your own head. You know, I am I, debating in my own head and watching yeah. very, very closely what's happening in those other states because one thing, like, when people talk about alcohol and tobacco, I mean, those aren't products that are readily grown uh, yeah. in, in, in a home or Isn't in a community. A difference between, say, okay, you legalized alcohol many years ago, shouldn't we legalize marijuana too? Can you compare the two, or is it well, apples and oranges? I think it's apples and oranges, but, but then again, that's why the great experiment is watching what happens in these other states, because yeah. the thing is this, you can grow marijuana just about anywhere in this San Joaquin Valley. So the question is, when you talk about regulating it and taxing it, uh, well, who's going to, which company is going to grow it and, re and sell it, it when you can go out there in your backyard and grow right. 800 plants? So I, I don't know how that experiment is going to work out, but we're waiting to see what happens in those two states. Yeah. And, of course, what the voters of California do if, in fact, it does make the ballot. If it passes, then we follow the law. All right, got to take a break. We're talking with Henry Perea. He is a Fresno County supervisor, been there for many years, former Fresno City Councilman. He knows politics uh, quite well here in this area. 436, MeTV, Option 11, weigh in on the conversation. We're back in just a moment. When you're looking for KitchenAid innovation and quality, who has the answers, the selection, the price? Ventura TV Appliance. With billions in nationwide appliance buying power, more than Home Depot and Best Buy combined, we'll help you save. Our low prices on Energy Star qualified KitchenAid appliances save you energy and money and pay no interest on select models when paid in full within 12 months. Ventura TV Appliance, serving you since 1951. What is on your mind on this Friday morning here on Connect With Me, 436 Me TV Option 11. Henry Perea is here. Now, you have a meeting coming up on the 25th of this month. Uh, let me take a call first. I'll ask, uh, I'll ask you that question in just a moment here. Good morning. You're on with Henry Perea. Your question. Hello, Hello. caller. Hi. Quick. Go ahead. I am calling about the marijuana discussion they're having. Yeah, go ahead. Quickly. I don't think that should be legalized to anybody. It wasn't before. It, why should it be now? Okay. Well, I appreciate your opinion. We, we respect your opinion, and thank you for the call. So there you have it. There you go. <laughs> it, it's, I mean, everybody one has caller, an opinion. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. yeah, one yeah. caller in favor, the other caller against. Right. I want to ask you, you're going to have a, a, a meeting on the 25th of this month to talk about the animal shelter right. the, at the old morgue that's going on. Are you talking about expansion or uh, what, what's going to happen there? Well, you know, just a little history. Uh, when the SPCA a year or so back said we're not going to um, work with these animals anymore from the county or, or city of Fresno perspective, we had to go out on our own. So the temporary fix was we went to our old morgue facility and basically we're in the parking lot. And I think Liberty Animal Control has done the best job they can do with the resource we've given them. But we see we're going to be there for a while. So on the 25th, our board is going to talk about tearing down that old morgue building, spending about $2 million to, one, do that, and then, two, expand and, and create Build a new facility? New, new, new services. Uh, okay. it, it'll, be, it'll just a, be a fancier outdoor covered kennel type situation, but much better than what we have right now. Good morning. You're on Connect With Me. Your question. Uh, just a quick uh, question for Henry. Um, um, how much of the marijuana uh, legislation that is unique to Fresno County is stimulated by the fact that Margaret Mann's only um, claim to fame is attacking, you know, is, is taking out marijuana groves in the uh, um, Sierras? Okay, there was, there's a lot there, but let me just say, yes, Market Mims is our sheriff, and this is something that she was concerned about, but it was strictly within the authority of the Board of Supervisors to make that decision, and we did. And, and like I said, I think it's a final decision. We, we put it on, on pause or reset. Uh, we know that people legitimately need medical marijuana, but there has to be a better way to get it to folks than what was happening because we had a lot of illegal activity going on, even to the point where people were being murdered uh, for trying to steal uh, Marijuana, that tells us there's a problem. Well, just a question. Um, just as we, as you um, uh, put it out of service, why don't you just totally legalize it in the county? <laughs> well, I mean, that, that's a bigger issue. And, and I think that's what some folks, 
in the marijuana community are talking about putting it on the statewide ballot for the voters to decide whether we should do that. Uh, but right now the law is medical marijuana, so we're trying to figure out how to get that medicine to those folks who legitimately need it and those who are as opposed to those who are just acquiring medical marijuana cards who don't need it. So it's, it's a tough issue. Yeah. Appreciate your call. Thank you very much. Kind of short on time here. Getting back to the animal shelter, is it going to cost about two million bucks? Yeah, about say? two million dollars to tear down the building as well as then build something back up that would be uh, better shelters, uh, covered shelters for the animals. And um, where will that money come from? Right now. How will you raise that money? Yeah, right now, um, as you've probably seen in the last month or so, the revenues are increasing statewide uh, so business uh, the climate is getting better and we've realized about a 21 million more dollars this year than we expected so oh, so we're starting in the pot in the pot so okay. so we don't want to create things that are going to be ongoing expenses so we're, do, we're looking at capital projects like this right. where we can spend two million dollars to upgrade a facility but it's not going to be an ongoing cost to is us. that going to be a no-kill shelter no, it will, it, not, it will not be a yeah. no-kill shelter. No, no. Well, okay. you know, the, the long-term vision for the county, and we're trying to get the city of Fresno to come back to work with us on, is to build a no-kill shelter in Fresno County. And Daryl Ridenauer has uh, donated some land to us that we can use to build that facility. So I think we're about three or four years out from a no-kill shelter. Let's let's hope the city comes on board with you guys. That'd well, be hope, nice. I'm yeah. glad you guys took it over. Oh, you and bet. At least you know those. You got to feel sorry for those animals you in, in a lot of ways. You see so many strays out in Fresno. Another call. Uh, you're on Connect with me. Your question quickly, please. Yes, uh, John, uh, Supervisor. Always a pleasure to see you. I did want to comment that. Do you think the prison overcrowding is a part of the problem? Why there's so much violence uh, with these grow areas, and just how could it be possibly uh, regulated? Uh, it's impossible for a business to actually start growing, as far as the state law goes now. And good luck. Thank you. Yeah. Well, you know, we do have a conflict between federal and state law, and that causes a lot of problems for us. But the prison overcrowding in this case, I would say no, only because there is so much money to be made in the sale of, of marijuana that we just have a lot of folks who, who are using it as an opportunity to, to make money. Yeah. But then the, the underlying all that, though, is we do have a lot of organized crime, like cartels from Mexico. They're willing who, to who are, kill. They're willing to kill. To, to grow it, uh, right. and of course, then to, to try to sell it. So and it's a, to steal a, it. Yeah, it's a huge issue. Yeah, it really is. I want to ask you about another issue here, and that is the uh, Dr. Haddon issue. Of course, right. he's our Fresno County coroner. If it hadn't been for him, probably wouldn't have a new facility right, right. now. You know that right. better than anybody. And so uh, recently, the board decided, you know, as a, a three, one, and one vote, you were the one lone guy, the holdout, that said, no, we don't need to replace Dr. Haddon and throw everything in the lap of the Sheriff's Department. So a year from now, the Sheriff's Department will actually take over the coroner's job. Yeah. And Haddon will be out, obviously. Yeah. Um, why in your mind is that the wrong move? Well, first let me just say, you know, we, we live every Tuesday by the rule of the majority. And the majority made the decision, so now my job is to be implementation uh, of, the, of the new rule. But the reason why I did not agree with it is because there was no logic behind it. You know, whether, you know, the logic of it's going to save money and we proved that it's That's not going to save money. Issue. It's going to cost what, yeah. more money. And the other was just operations, that it would be a more efficient operation. Nobody could make the case that it would be a more efficient operation. And I think what brought it to light to me is uh, on the day when you're making such a major move and taking away from the voters the right to pick a coroner and moving it now to the district attorney and the sheriff's department, and the sheriff and the district attorney hadn't even been consulted before we made the decision. Well, okay, so... W and you, there's you, Dr. Haddon there yeah, walking around the new facility, but I understand... You circle back to what's the problem, and well, we the, couldn't identify the problem. Listen, you know as well as I do, that could present a conflict of interest once you get into court if the sheriff's department takes over this, this area, uh, and then they go into court, it creates a conflict of interest because they're 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 the arresting party let's say they yeah. go and arrest somebody and then for whatever kind of crime that you know maybe was committed and then if they're in charge of also doing an autopsy for the same case isn't that a conflict well, no question about it and and what we've done is we've increased the cost of that operation because now where there's not a question at all it will always be from a good defense attorney's perspective 
something to put into question with respect to conflict of interest, which then means we have to go outside of county. So you would have outside maybe? corners. Oh, no, lawsuits, incurring costs by having corners from other counties come in and do the work. So, yeah, it, it, it's just not a good use of resources and time when you think about a sheriff who's probably 25% of her command staff has been reduced over years because of budget. Yeah. So they're, they're having a tough enough time keeping cops on the streets, you know, dealing with marijuana issues, and now they're going to be dealing with corner issues. I mean, just a, not a good use of resources. It doesn't make sense, does no, it? No, yeah. it doesn't. Another call. Good morning. You're on Connect With Me. Your question. Hi. Uh, I just wanted to ask a real quick question. Um, yeah. With, the, with the Mr. Supervisor, are you still here in the local area because you feel you still have work to do here uh, in, in local government? Because, you know, your son, he's an assemblyman now, but I'm pretty sure that if you would have ran, you would have won that position yourself. I, mean, <laughs> I would have for you. I've been following you for a while. Yeah. You know, the Kennedys of, of our area. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, well, thank you for that vote of confidence. But let me tell you. Uh, Pick your son out and take yeah. the seat. That's I don't all. think I would go up against my son. I think he'd beat me. He's pretty sharp. <laughs> I'm but, teasing but, you. Uh, but I am a local guy. I mean, I really like local politics. It's where yeah. the rubber hits the road. Uh, you can touch and feel. Uh, the decisions that you make. So, no, yeah. thank you for that. But no, I love local politics. Yeah, uh, we got to take a break, and we'll come back with uh, Henry Perea, four three six Me TV Option Eleven. He's a popular guy. See all the phone calls today. It's amazing. We're back with our show in just a moment. Now, why don't you tell us the whole story right from the beginning? All right, from the beginning. This is the city, Los Angeles, California. My name's Friday. I carry a badge. Police officers. You any idea who the other man was? My partner's Bill Gannon. Program? We got just one big question. Yeah, when? Now on Me TV Fresno, Xfinity 187. That would be one phenomenal story is uh, if you ran against your son. <laughs> anyway, uh, I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, caller, you're on the air. Whoops, you were on the air. Okay, call back. Uh, 436, me, TV option 11. Sometimes you got to be a little patient uh, before we actually get to your call. But 436, me, TV option 11. And so um, let's talk a little bit, too, about city politics. You're a former Fresno City Councilman. Okay, you know City Hall inside out pretty much. What do you think about the Planning Commission the other night determining that, okay, Fulton Mall, this is our recommendation, open that thing back up to traffic. Is that the right thing to do, and if so, why? You know, that's the million-dollar question, and, and I, I'm not surprised by the Planning Commission decision, but I think looking long-term, it's, it's uh, where the city, I think, sometimes has problems, as we did when I was on the council, is, is looking at a at a long-term vision for something. Look at and this old footage up here. You're, you're, you can go ahead and continue talking, but that's the old footage when they actually uh, tore yeah. them all up and installed it, put it in. Yeah, you I, I think it. people put it in too simplistic terms. Open the mall, and all of a sudden, there's going to be all kinds of people from North Fresno coming downtown. Yeah. I, I don't think that's, that's so. I mean, what, what killed the, the Fulton Mall were several things. One was they didn't execute the entire plan. In addition to creating a mall, they meaning, said... Meaning you had to create a lot of mixed use and housing around the mall, which they never did. They just did the mall. Because of money, probably. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure it, money and, and, and continuity. But then Manchester Center started uh, the acceleration of killing the mall. Then as Fashion Fair killed Manchester and the beat goes on. I mean, that, that's what right. happens when, when you grow out. So move but, uh, north, 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 sure. north. So. Sure. So, you know, if anyone thinks that opening the mall to traffic is a silver bullet, I don't think so. It's one piece of a larger equation. It's just a matter of having the broader discussion to make it all make sense financially. Good morning, you're on Connect With Me. Your question's got to be quick. We're short on time. Uh, good morning. Yes, I can't help but wonder if uh, by going through the sheriff's department or the police department or both, if it would not be a feasible way for the people that needed medical marijuana to get medical marijuana without all the crooks and stuff being involved. You know, I mean, that, that's, a, that's a good idea, but let me tell you what we're thinking about. Uh, and and I, like I've said when we, we took the vote, it, our responsibility goes beyond voting no to growing marijuana, medical marijuana in Fresno County. The, our responsibility continues is, okay, how do we get legitimate medical marijuana to legitimate uh, people who need it? And I, I think um, we should either, as a county health department, act as a pharmacy 
and and secure a, a, a reliable source of medical marijuana and have people come to it just like you would to a pharmacy for any other medicine or have it regulated and sold through pharmacies. Uh, that way people can go to their doctors, get their prescription, and go to a pharmacy and get get it filled. I think that doesn't mean people aren't going to abuse it, because just like people abuse prescription sure, drugs, they're sure. going to abuse it. But you have to have, like you say, a legitimate system. Right. Legitimate source uh, supply. Right. And going to legitimate users with, with prescriptions written by legitimate doctors. Exactly right. Yeah. And uh, let's, uh, let's continue talking about Fulton Mall now, getting back to that. So, uh, you know, uh, let's put up a picture of what it looks like now. That's Fulton Mall today. So they're going to, you know, the recommendation is to tear this thing up. Put the, but you said just by opening it up to cars isn't going to make people go down there. What will make people go down there, in you your know, opinion? W when, when you look at any business, whether it's a pharmacy, grocery store, etc., when they make their business decisions, it's about rooftops. How many rooftops are in that area that would support whether it's a grocery store, a restaurant, etc.? So what the sh city should be talking about is a combined effort of bringing people uh, into housing situations downtown, as well as opening the Fulton Mall and, and maybe other doing other things. But the question is the timing and the use of resources to bringing do that. Bringing business there. Sure, yeah. you have to bring business there, but but I mean just. Where they want to open the mall now, the end of the mall that they want to open, the county of Fresno is the largest, one of the largest landowners on those sections of the mall. So, uh, you know, you can fly jets through there at 5 o'clock. It's going to be closed because yeah. our, our business is 8 to 5 Monday through Friday. So we, right. they need to think about that. Yeah, they need to open that up. Okay, good morning. You're on Connect With Me. Your question. Yes, I'd like to ask Mr. Ferreira if he has a figure on how much money Fresno County spends on the eradication and incarceration of marijuana offenders and um, to get the cartels out. Um, that, that they're like making money for weapons and all kinds of things of mass destruction. But I would just like to know the figure, if he has a figure. Okay. Uh, otherwise, I will do some research on my own. All right. Because I know that we... Uh, Fresno County is one of the poorest counties in the in the state, and how much money we could put that law enforcement to for pedophiles and things like that, you know? Okay. I, I just don't understand. I understand. Uh, maybe you can Thank clarify you. for me. Yeah. Thank you for the Thank question. You. Bye -bye. All right. Yeah, what I can tell you, I don't have the exact dollar number other than I can tell you it costs us thousands of dollars uh, to do it because we don't just do it as a, a singular county. When we, we create multi-jurisdictional task forces, sometimes the feds are involved in surrounding counties. So it does cost money. I, I can't put the price out on it. But what I do know with the passage of this recent legislation, the sheriff will be coming back to the Board of Supervisors and telling us what the cost will be to form an enforcement team to go out and eradicate these fields. Am I wrong if I say no matter what it costs, you've got to crack down, you've got to eradicate, put these guys in jail because it is against the law? We can't, we can't let people steal and people murder and get shot over marijuana grows. Yeah, no, that's right. It, it's about priorities. So it, and, it and right now, how much it cost, right? Right. Right now, this is a priority to the Fresno right. County Board of Supervisors and, and to the sheriff because people are dying. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and just to give a real quick example, what, what it had been happening is if you get a medical marijuana card and they say, well, you can have 99 plants. Well, you get about 15 of, of your friends and everybody goes to the same doctor and everybody gets a uh 90 uh, card for 99 plants right well what they were doing was getting these 15 to 20 medical marijuana cards posting them on you know the a stake on the outside of a five acre parcel yeah. law enforcement shows up and there's nothing they could do so, so, Is so it people like getting so, a fake id almost pretty much so people were figuring yeah. out how to use the system but in the meantime people were getting hurt they were getting shot neighbors that were surrounding these areas all of a sudden now were smelling not just smelling the the pungent odor of the marijuana I know. but having to deal with people who are you know doing illegal activity we got one minute left and not asking you to say anything bad about the mayor uh, ashley swearingen but she's <laughs> tried to pass measure g failed brt failed uh, i can't think of anything else off the top of my head so i had somebody come up to me the other day and said what do you think about the mayor her mayorship is a fa she's a failed mayor her mayorship her mayoral ship is a failure and i said well i don't know that i mean would you would you agree or disagree with that 
Well, I guess what I would say is having been in politics as long as I have, it's a tough business. It is. And uh, it's about building consensus, and yeah. it's about, at the end of the day, if you're on a five-member board, get counting to three, or city council counting to four. Uh, so... Uh, I think she's done the best that she can with the resources that she has, right. and I, we just but keep moving forward. I think that's kind of harsh for somebody to say that because they've never been in that position. True. Yeah, yeah. That, that's easy to say, but you don't know until you're in the seat because it's a yeah. tough job. Governing is tough. I agree. She's done the best job that she possibly can, and so have you. Thank you, sir. Hey, I want you back here. You again. bet. We'll Sometime be back soon. Hey, don't wait so long. Okay. It's my fault. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Got to go. That's going to do it for us today. Thank you to Henry Perea for showing up today here on Connect With Me. We're back with another edition on Monday. Ruth Michaels from KMJ Radio will be here. Have a great weekend.